Hey, what's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we're talking about the new Harakiri for the Sky album, Mere, via AOP Records. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. Also support us on Patreon. Harakiri for the Sky is an Austrian melodic black and post-black metal band that has seriously turned heads in the underground scene since their conception in 2011, even dare I say getting some more mainstream attention with their previous release Arson reaching number 29 in the German music charts. This is the band's fifth album named for a malicious folk entity that creeps on people's chests during the night, causing breathlessness and anxiety. A popular topic, it seems like, all the time. As the press release puts it, it's exactly this state of diffuse terror and paralysis that has been enshrined in Harakiri for the Sky's music ever since their debut album. And strap in, y'all, because this is quite the lengthy journey clocking in at nearly an hour and a half in its runtime. To be honest, seeing that on the front end already raised my anxiety at the thought of this daunting undertaking, but from the very start with I, Paul Bearer, it was clear that I had made the right decision in choosing this album. Mere is a stunning opus of epic proportions in every sense of the word, awash in gorgeous, shimmering guitar melodies and stunning atmosphere that truly takes me to another plane. There's a constant warring of these more ethereal and at times even mellow death sounding riffs with the more aggressive blast beats and when fused with the post-hardcore influenced vocals, the end result is honestly quite the wonder to behold. I was definitely reminded of 2020 albums from both Dayuj and Uwada while listening, but this takes those ideas to a completely different level while also putting in influences from the likes of everything from Alcest to Insomnium. Speaking of which, Alcest's frontman actually makes a guest appearance on the second track, Sing for the Damage We've Done, which is easily one of the best the album has to offer with its breathtaking guitar work and great balance of hooks and overall atmosphere. I love the sense of immediacy and energy that permeates every moment of this song, which is largely driven by the one-two punch of the guitars and drums. The latter of which is, by the way, provided by none other than Karim Krim Lechner of Septic Flesh and Live Drumming for Behemoth. His work on the kit is a powerful presence all over this album, sometimes above all else. Honestly, Harakiri for the Sky could have gone fully instrumental on this track, and it still would have spoken volumes in the musicianship alone. And while I personally tend to love these faster moments the most, it's important that an album, especially of this length and scope, bring plenty of ups and downs to keep things engaging. As such, this offers plenty of these slower, more drifting compositions in tracks like Us Against December Skies and the 11 plus minute I'm All About the Dusk. And despite myself being a little jaded and cynical when it comes to lengthier, more atmospheric outings, Harakiri really managed to keep me enthralled with plenty of shifting moments and plenty of memorable little standout pieces of instrumentation. In particular, I loved the waterfall of cascading piano notes that pops up around the 850 mark before the cool, proggy, bass-driven transition to the big finale. But regardless of pace, really every second of this album is brimming with powerful songwriting that is also highly emotional in nature. No matter what I'm doing or what mood I'm in, I press play on this thing and it's like flipping a switch. I'm transported to a deep well of introspection traversing melancholy, outright sorrow, and motivational catharsis. It's in the entire picture, but also the little details. It's the very catchy vocal cadence and endlessly pounding drums that kick off three empty words. It's the stirring, minimalistic acoustic intro of Time is a Ghost. It's the very dark tranquility sounding piano on closing track song to say goodbye. It's the incredible build on Once Upon a Winter that starts up around 545 and subsequently transitions to the faster portion just a little bit further on. And speaking of this last track, it's another lengthy one but with plenty of peaks and valleys that you do not want to miss. <laughs> Thank you. 
I also don't want to ignore the other guest appearance on this album with the anonymous voice of Garea joining in on Silver Needle Golden Dawn. Garea definitely made an impact on a lot of people in 2020 with Limbo, and I feel like their style is quite complementary with what Harakiri for the Sky are doing as well, albeit on a harsher part of the spectrum. As such, it makes for another great standout moment on the album, and one certainly leaning at times in a much darker direction. All said and done, I'm honestly shocked that this album is an hour and a half, because it just flies by. If you're feeling unsure about it on first listen, it might be worth taking it in two halves, but seriously, it doesn't feel that long. I've listened to 45 minute albums that feel like it took hours to get through, but thanks to this band's highly adept compositional skills and always shifting performances, they make every minute so engaging that you'll never be checking your watch. If I were to nitpick this release a little, I do have issues with some of the kind of sameness, as I put it, that generally comes with this style. It's weird because I recognize while listening that everything has its own unique texturing, but all the same, by the time it's over, I still find myself feeling like it was one big block of kind of the same approach. That could be taken just as much as a compliment in terms of consistency, but at the same time I do wonder if I could have a little bit more distinct shifts in tone from song to song to help further separate and differentiate them. Some more vocal variation alone, I think, could go a very long way, but maybe that's just my opinion. Turning to my scales, I give Mere a 10 for enjoyability. I think especially given the runtime, it's hard for me to not give this album a perfect score in this area, given just how consistently it kept me not only engaged, but deeply engrossed. I give it a 9 for musicianship, more great performances from all band members both individually and especially as a unit. Again, I do dock a point for wanting just a little bit more differentiation from track to track, but as an entire work, it really is breathtaking. You're breathtaking! And I give it an 8 for innovation. There are plenty of bands making music in this style these days, but it seems like Harakiri are not only leading the pack, but continuing to always strive forwards with their sound. So a 9 overall and an A- for Harakiri for the Sky and Mere. Get it again via AOP Records. Y'all, thanks as always for watching, and let me know what you thought of this album below, and if you enjoyed this, you should also check out my review of last year's album from Dayuj, as well as the album from Uwada. And hey, just stick around in general, because I got plenty more videos for you to enjoy, not only these album reviews, but I've also got track reviews, tier lists, interviews with bands on the podcast, you name it, we've got it, so plenty of reasons again to subscribe if you've not already. Also, again, support us on Patreon, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.